Hey guys, welcome to Tuesday T Tips. I'm Jerry Feta, owner, founder, and CEO of the Wealth Dynamics brand. So I wanna give you an awesome tip today, and it's actually something that a client asked one of my endorsed wealth mentors, and I'm gonna share with you the answer that I gave and why I gave that answer. And this has to do with when you get extra money. You get extra money, putting that towards your sacred account, right? And the question was, do I pay off my loan? If I have an outstanding policy loan, we'll talk about what that means today, or do I put it into my account? Like, do I put it as a contribution instead, right? Now, if you watch to the end of the video today, I have a special offer for you. I always have a special offer for you, okay? But if you watch to the end of the video today, you can actually set up a sacred account with no education and service fee. So generally when we set up sacred accounts with clients, we charge an education and service fee because we provide education and service that other agencies just don't. And so we charge a fee for that of usually anywhere from 500 to $1,500. I'm gonna go crazy, I'm gonna waive that entirely. Plus I'm gonna give you access to a free masterclass and a free one-on-one -on -one consultation with my team. So if you watch to the end of the video, I'm gonna give you the link for that, okay? So check this out, we're gonna dive into our content. All right, so today I was, I was in North Carolina this morning. I went to bed in North Carolina, woke up in North Carolina. The day before I was in Atlanta, uh, Georgia, Savannah, Georgia. I was in uh, South Carolina, North Carolina. Right now I'm in West, no, I'm in just Virginia, not West Virginia, just Virginia. And so when I woke up this morning, one of my endorsed wealth mentors texted me and she said, hey, I'm talking to a client. He's got this question. So I told her, okay, cool. Tell me what it is. So she said that the client, he set up a sacred account already, right? He's got his account going. If you don't know what the sacred account is, it's the concept of becoming your own bank, right? Using a life insurance policy. Now we don't care that it's a life insurance policy, it just is one, that's the best tool for the job. The type of life insurance is called high early cash value dividend paying whole life insurance. Instead of saying that, I just say the sacred account. It's, for me, it's an account that is sacred, right? So he set up his sacred account, he's becoming his own banker, he's depositing income into it. Step number one, he's depositing his income just like he would with a bank. Step number two, he's being the banker, he's gonna borrow against his cash value, just like a bank would borrow against his deposits, he's gonna then loan that to himself, just like a bank would loan that to a borrower, then he's gonna take that money and he's gonna either pay off his, his debt or invest or make a large purchase with it, and then he's gonna pay himself back just like you would pay back a banker if you took a loan from them, right? Now, he said in the middle of it, I might get a big lump sum of money, right? So let's say I put in $100,000, that's step number one. I borrow out, let's say 80,000, I loan that to myself on a real estate deal. That real estate deal is paying me $800 a month. I'm taking that $800 a month. I'm repaying my loan every month with it, right? If you pay back a bank's loan, of course, pay back your own bank's loan. Don't cheat yourself just because you own the joint. And then he's saying, well, I have this other thing happening and let's say I get another 50,000, right? Out of the blue, 50,000 shows up. What do I do? Number one, do I repay that loan, right? Because I have an outstanding policy loan of $80,000. Do I repay that with the 50,000? Or do I take that 50,000 and do I put that into my new sacred account or my current sacred account as a new contribution in the front end of the policy, right? And here's what I told him. I said, okay, so number one, it depends on what your income is and how much of your savings are you currently putting in your account? Okay, if you could be putting more savings in your account, I would take that new money and I would open up a new policy with it. Okay, the, the thing is, the reality is you're probably not gonna stick another 50 in addition to what you've got going on in your current account that you have now. That's probably pretty close to its limit, okay? And so instead, we'd take that new 50,000, we'd open up a second policy. That would be our lump sum, right? The minimum on that on a second policy is gonna be $5,000 per year. The minimum is gonna be either 10% of your lump sum as an annual contribution. Doesn't need to be paid annually. He could pay that per month. I think that's like, $433 a month, right? So he could do that, second policy, or what he could do is, depending on his age, is his minimum might be a bit higher, right? So the other one is it's 10 times his age per month. So let's say he's you know 55 years old. It might be a little higher, then he's 550 a month. But either way, he's putting a lump sum in and then following that up with his income as another contribution. So now he's got two policies. The initial one, which he put the 100,000 in, he borrowed 80, He's got the investments, paying him $800 a month. That's cash flowing, it's paying the loan back. Then he takes the new 50,000, puts that into a second policy, 50,000 lump sum, $433 a month being paid into it. Now he's got two locations of his bank, right? Now, why wouldn't I just pay back the loan? You're like, Jerry, he's got an outstanding loan of 80,000. Why not just pay the loan back? Well, because the principle is keep the money moving, 
So follow me on this. I've got a loan, an $80,000 loan at, at you know, let's say 5% interest. I pay it back with the 50. I've now got 50 available, available in my cash value. If you watched any of my videos, what am I gonna do when I've got 50 grand? I'm gonna borrow it out to go put it into a real estate deal. So what is the point of paying off the loan just to pull it right back out again? I accomplished nothing. All I did was give myself administrative work. I've got to fill out paperwork to repay the loan, and then I've got to request the loan again, and I might have saved a few days worth of interest, but it didn't really change my life, right? So instead, I want to take that money and I want to contribute to a new policy because now I've got another location of my bank. That 50,000 is going to earn three to 5% per year tax-free for the rest of my life. I don't get that if I put it as a loan repayment. Okay, so now when I borrow, I borrow the 50, I take the 50, I borrow against it, I'm probably gonna borrow 35, 40,000 of that, put that in real estate, right? But the 50 still grows. The money that I put in still grows like it never left because it didn't leave because I took a loan against it. I didn't withdraw it, right? So I want two locations of my bank. I don't wanna just pay a loan back to then pull the money back out again. Right, so if you're doing this, like the name of the game on this, just like any bank that's, that's, that's a big name bank, I want you to think of who you bank with, the Wells Fargo's, the Bank of America's, the JP Morgan's, the PIMCO's, the PMC's, how many locations do they have? They're not one location, they're dozens, right? One of my mentors, he's got over 20 of these policies, 20 of them, his bank has over 20 locations. Right, I want you doing that. You should have many of them. Nelson Nash, the guy who founded this concept, last I saw, he had almost 50. Almost 50. He passed away a couple years ago, right? But almost 50 sacred accounts. So you should be thinking with when I get money, I'm not trying to just pay back a loan. I'm not trying to just stick money in my current policy. I want to open up a new one. Because the long-term wealth building of that new policy with a new dump in and a new contribution is going to far outweigh just repaying a loan or just doing some paid up additions in my current one with the maximum I can do. Let's go open a new one up, right? And I'll tell you what I mean by this. Like I had a client today, his name is Mike. I was talking to him. I was looking at his policy, okay? In the year 2023, Mike is going to get $6,250 in dividends on his policy. Okay, six grand in dividends, right? His loan interest, and granted, Mike is not paying his loans back. He's breaking the rule of being his own banker. I talked to him about this today. I was like, Mike, you really need to be paying your loans back every month. The point of this is not to take the money out and never repay. The point of it is to repay a monthly payment just like you would with someone else's bank. Be an honest banker, right? But Mike hasn't been being an honest banker, but it doesn't matter because Mike's loan interest was only $5,000. So Mike borrows, earns $6,000 in dividends on the money he's borrowing, and his interest is only 5,000. Mike is being paid $1,000 to borrow his own money right now. That's, I saw that on the screen today. I was like, okay, how, how am I gonna tell Mike he needs to pay his loan back when he's gonna tell me, well, Jerry, I don't see why I need to. I'm making $1,000. Okay, yes, but be an honest banker. Pay your loan back. Your profit could be higher. Your profit could be higher if you repay those loans. So that's the benefit of setting up a good policy the correct way, letting it capitalize, letting it grow letting it do its thing, right? And then setting up another one, and then setting up another one, and then setting up another one. I'm in the midst of setting up another one of my policies right now, okay? So guys, that's what I've got for you today. That's my Tuesday tip on if you've got an existing policy, you're thinking about dumping money in or repaying a loan, that's what you should be doing. And I told you, if you watched to the end of the video, I had a special gift for you, okay? I am going to give you a sacred account for free. Not for free, meaning that I'm gonna cover your contributions. You need to do that. I can't be the banker for you. I can't deposit money into it for you, but I can waive the education and service fee that my company charges, right? So right now, if you go to sacredaccount.com forward slash masterclass, sacredaccount.com forward slash masterclass, okay? If you go there, what I want you to do is I want you to watch this, the masterclass video there. You have to watch the entire thing. I talked to someone last week. They're like, Jerry, I want your help. And I said, good. Go watch the masterclass. Here's the instructions. And he said, okay, I skipped through the video. And I said, no, 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 no. I said, watch the full video. You got to follow the instructions. He was like, I don't like following instructions. I was like, cool. I don't like working with people that can't follow instructions. We're not going to be a good fit. You need to watch the full video. You're getting your own banking system set up. Don't skip through it. Watch the entire thing. Commit to learning so you know what it is. Once you're done, that's actually going to direct you to schedule a free call with my team. And on that call, they're going to help you design your own banking system free of charge, no education and service fee, nothing like that. So go to sacredaccount.com forward slash masterclass. Until next time, like, share, subscribe. I'll talk to you later.